Hey guys, so today's update is the mystery behind Mr. A's phone. If this were like an Encyclopedia Brown series, I guess that would be the title. I'm a bit dating myself, but I feel like this whole thing has been like a series of trying to figure out clues. And if you remember from that, from that author, if you're of that age, of that genre, that Encyclopedia Brown, I could never figure it out, by the way. Like, you know, when I was that age, I was like, oh, how did he see that? Because he was always like, mm hmm, like he was just all waiting for other people to be like, what about this? What about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, mm hmm. And it's always usually like the person you didn't expect doing something shady. And he was always like, well, it was because of this thing that, you know, I knew that this guy was like, you know, shady AF. So usually it's a lot about like another coincidence. And this is behind this story as well. Another strange coincidence. Okay, so in a nutshell, Mr. A's phone apparently went missing 7.02 a.m. on April 25th. And it was turned in to the Panpo Information Center on Sunday, May 30th. So that's over a month. However, it is claimed that a sanitation worker found it on May 11th and just kept it in his locker until May 30th. So if we are to believe Mr. A, the last interaction or hands-on experience he had with his phone was at 3.37 a.m. when in that picture that we saw at 3.37 a.m. he was calling his mom and spoke with his dad. Then apparently he said that the phone was turned off and no more interaction. Mr. A's mother said that at 4.27 a.m. she called Mr. A's phone and the phone was turned off. So that matches the timeline of the story. Mr. A said the phone was gone and Miss, Miss A, we'll just call her, or Mrs. A, called her son's phone, was off. However, Remember when Mr. A had SJM's phone and then returned it at around 5.40 in the morning to SJM's mom? So at that point, SJM's mom still thinks her son is alive. She, that he's somewhere out there somewhere and she just got her son's phone back. So she kind of thinks that, you know what? Maybe my son has Mr. A's phone because you know, the phone's probably got switched. So I'm just going to keep calling his phone and see if he picks up. If he picks up, that's going to be so easy. Just like wrap this all up. You know, he's just going to tell us where he is. So she keeps calling and she says that it starts ringing and she starts calling around 6 a.m. So if the phone was off and you never saw your phone after 3.37 a.m., so who turned it on between 4.27 a.m. if we're supposed to believe... Mrs. A and 6 a.m. Somebody turned on that phone. Who? Who? Who turned on that phone? Because it started ringing and ringing. And then this mother of SJM, she just wanted to hear her son's voice. She kept calling, 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 calling. And then it stopped ringing at 7.02 a.m. And then it was just assumed the battery died. The phone was lost. And they thought that it's probably somewhere in the park. Maybe it's even under the water and they'll never find that phone, even though they kept searching for it, right? They found that it pinged at Yongsan-gu's Seobingo Tong. Seobingo is across the river from Pampo in the northern part. So that means that phone kind of flew over the river or took a little drive over the bridge. How did it ping across the river? And you know where 
Cao Bingo is, it's a little bit on the way to the Yongsan Electronics market where they could do, you know, a hack job surgery on a phone. Just saying. So how did it ping over there? However, then they revised the statement apparently to say that, oh no, 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 it pinged near the Han River, Hangangpyeon. But there's Hangangpyeon on the north side and on the south side. So if you have to then double check to see if you're not getting conned by that statement, then you know you have a credibility issue with the people who are supplying you with the information. Also, just so you know, Sobingo means like West Ice Depository. And so like in the old days, like when you didn't have freezers, like it was the job of like people to hack up all the ice during the winter, save it so that the king can have like, you know, frozen lemonade in the summertime. Yeah. And then there's also a Tong Bingo in the east. So east and west. And I was like, is there one in the north and the south? But apparently not north south, just east and west. When you get to have some white hair as a Korean man, this is how you throw some shade on some national news because he was basically saying like, how did, how did Ping in Subingo and then suddenly change to the Han Riverfront? But I guess we'll just move on. Uh-huh. Okay, so then I'm just gonna fast forward to what the digital forensics said. Digital forensics from the police said, 3.37 a.m. was the last call, and 7.02 a.m., phone shut off. It was never turned on again, never used. So, totally matches Mr. A's statement, and it is a space gray iPhone 8. All right, so let's talk about now the guy who found the phone. We're not gonna harp too much on him. However, he does resemble in a a few ways, more than not, some of the fishermen's characteristics. Not physically, not all that kind of stuff, but just in the sense of like, are you for real? Because let's take a look at this. So first of all, people asked, when did you find it? He said, sometime between May 10th and May 15th. I don't remember. May 10th? May 15th. And then he also said a few days ago. So one time he said a few days ago, and then another time he said, oh, no, 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 between May 10th and May 15th. Then after all of that kind of settled down, he said, you know what? I think it was May 11th at 9.30 a.m. And then after that settled down, he said, you know what? I think it was May 11th at 8.30 a.m. So now we have his final statement after going from a few days ago, which basically is like the end of May, to the beginning of May at 8.30 a.m. Then we want to know, where did you find it, sir? Well, he said, um, I don't remember. I was just cleaning up the park. So... He is part of what they call the environmental beautification team, which is essentially a sanitation worker, but we have an awesome name for it. It's basically environmental beautification team. So he goes out in the morning. So you know how you saw how people are just on in that park all night. And so they leave trash, yes, in the morning. And so people go out and they clean it in the morning. And he's part of that team. And he claims that in the morning, he found this phone among the refuse of a picnic area that looked like it was, you know, kind of like a place where people were drinking beer, soju, and snacks for about two to three people. He didn't know whether the phone was just put there, left there by those people, or whether somebody had just dropped it off over there. He just said, oh, I think somebody dropped it off there. But why would he say that? That's the other thing. You know how the fisherman said like, well, you can believe me or not believe me, but if we were paid off, shouldn't we be a little bit more exact and better than this? So he, he even said like, well, you know what? Um, yeah, because since it was May 10th, 15th, oh no, no, May 11th, I think somebody took the phone and then dropped it off here. Just like kind of dumped it here. Which, of course, 
does make sense in the in the bigger picture because there is absolutely no way that that phone naturally would have been in that spot from April 25th to May 11th. First of all, it rained nine times. And second of all, that place is heavily trafficked by visitors and also the beautification team. And also this elaborate search team that they had created to search for the phone. It would have been found. Not only that, the phone was in relatively good condition. It only had like a little crack on the back and who knows, that crack could have been there before Mr. A could have had a crack on the phone. It was out of battery, they recharged it, it worked perfectly. Again, people are very suspicious. They were like, okay, sir, because he was an older, he's an older gentleman. And you know, like, some people were like, well, maybe he is a little bit, you know, advanced in years and doesn't remember things. But I'll tell you probably if it, you know, his job were on the line, he'd be able to tell you how many soju bottles he collected last Tuesday. I'm pretty sure of that. So they were like, well, how did it come to the point where you just left it in your locker from May 11th to May 30th? That's quite a long time. And while you were doing your job every day, you saw this huge spectacle of all these like people on the police team, like jumping in the water, scuba diving, trying to find a phone, searching through the weeds, like trying to find a phone. Like you knew what was going on and you had a phone in your locker. Why didn't you turn it in? What were you doing with this phone? And he said, Oh, my arm was hurting. I had to go to the hospital and like, you know, I had to get some treatment stuff and I just forgot about it. And it was just in the locker. And then I just like forgot about it. And then I suddenly realized, oh, that might be the phone. And then so I turned it in and guess when that was? Remember I said it was May 30th. That was like on a Sunday. Okay. May 29th on that Saturday, that evening, that was when, you know, hot daddy show came on. And so it was like the day after. So is that coincidence or what? Why? That's what we want to know. Now, this is also where the public is a bit upset because when there is such a suspicious and real sus kind of situation like this, they really want good questioning. But the man refused to take a lie detector test. And the police are like, oh, well, fine. All right, well. If that's what you say, that's what you say. All right. Thank you, sir. And that's it. But if in anything, other analysts were saying like, look, he basically is holding on to like a stolen phone. If anything, you should question him for that. So there we go again, like another leap of faith in the favor of one party over the other. It depends on on when you recognize this pattern is when you start to get officially suspicious, I think, in this case. SJM's father was very quick to be suspicious. And of course, since he was first to the party, he needed to kind of keep it under wraps because it's not good to jacuse like right away. People aren't on board. He needs to make his case, but he's very close to the situation. He saw immediately firsthand what was going on, but I think more than that, he can see the coloration of this, the different subtleties, and I don't know exactly uh, where he works, what he does, but apparently he works for one of the Samsung companies. And I don't think he's like too high. I don't think he's too low. I think he's basically like middle management. And so from what I know, if you're like middle management in one of the Samsung subsidiary companies, that is like one of the worst places to be. No offense, but basically it is like people who just cut each other up at work every day. And they don't go anywhere because they know that that Samsung, best place 
you're, it's not going to get any better. So you don't have like people kind of like cycling out as much, you know, like if they don't like it, they'll leave. But everyone's like, yeah, but there's nowhere else better. So I better just stay here. And then I'm just going to enjoy backstabbing people. So what I'm saying is that, you know, as JM's father, he's probably seen everything. He's probably seen every game in the book, probably played every game in the book. So they really have messed with the wrong daddy because that daddy probably has even maybe done tutorials. A lot of, you know, when you're doing sports or any kind of situations like this is to kind of like analyze the field and spot a pattern and try to anticipate and see something before it happens. And I think what we're seeing as a pattern here is way too many leaps of faith. And I think that comes in the form of, well, it could be, yeah, but you can't prove that. It's like, so whenever it's like that kind of a situation, that immediately sets up if you are trying to manipulate this situation in your favor. The next step for you is then to get the observer to have that suspension of disbelief then pointed to the other side. So to SJM's side, well, he could have walked into the water to his death, and then you're, as you as the observer, feel like you have been equally fair to both sides. He could have just thrown his shoes away because they were worn out. He could have walked into the river and drowned himself on his own. I feel like I am open to both possibilities. But then do you see what you just did there? If this were kind of a money situation, you did not give money equally to both sides. You basically paid this side twice and you took from this side twice. Why did I say that? I think he could have thrown away the shoes that legitimately that favors them, profits them. I think he could have just walked into the river. No, it's not them. It doesn't favor SJM. It favors them. And not only that, if you're really in the shoes of SJM, it's not as if you didn't pay them. It's really as if you even took money from them. That's how it feels from their perspective. If you've ever been in their shoes, that's a real crappy place to be. Um, and not necessarily because they're looking at this side when they look at just people like us. Like when we're observing and being like, well, it could be possible. Like, I don't know. Like, trust me. <laughs> oh, you probably got, you guys probably also know it. It feels bad. So instead of staying in this land of, well, it could be, could be get out of that lane. What I think if you are going to try to be fair about this is then try to crack the weakest nut. Go after the fishermen, double check, verify, try to see if anybody can corroborate their statements because now the onus is on whether the fishermen are telling the truth. If you're going to let this whole thing hang in the balance of the fisherman's statement, then you should be able to try to verify the fisherman's statement with another witness. And as we saw from the CCTV footage, there are other witnesses in the area at the same time, even closer, that could probably verify or dispute what the fishermen have said. So that's a strategy to go after. And then also with this so-called discovery of the phone, I don't think it's so fair to go after so much the environmental beautification worker, but however, I think you should do whatever is fair in this situation in terms of questioning when it seems like somebody is not giving consistent, truthful answers. 
And again, he also said that like, oh, well, you know, I don't, I didn't have the original possession. I just found it later on. And I think somebody had dropped it here. So he's kind of like trying to shift the blame again on somebody. Also the location of where he claimed he found it. Again, look at where that location is. It should be familiar. It's right at the archway of like when you drive and you hop off and you jump a fence. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that could be like a good place for a little drive by, just like drive by and toss, drive by and toss the phone. Hope you make it onto the picnic mat. Extra bonus points. Okay, so that ends the trio of reasons why it seems like the cards are being really stacked against SJM because structurally, it just seems like there's so many leaps of faith being made on behalf of Mr. A and that really disadvantage SJM and his family. All right, so in the next video, we're going to explore a real life experiment done by some reporters to see if they could recreate, you know, those grainy images at 3.31 a.m. They recreated that situation. And then also they went and tried to see if they can recreate the sound profile of the fishermen when they're like, oh, it's so refreshing. They try to recreate that. So we're going to take a look at that as well. All right, guys, we'll see you again next time. Bye. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.